In this video, I'm going to take you in real time through my full ink and watercolour sketching process, showing you how to start simply, build up those colours in a couple of layers, and then apply those finishing touches. We almost cheat our way to having a detailed sketch, when in fact, there's only a few little details which are bringing it all together. The scene we're painting from is from Unsplash, it's linked down below, and it's a lovely church in the Cotswolds where I'm originally from. We will be doing this in a really approachable way. I'll let you know in a moment all the supplies I'm using, but really this kind of painting and sketching style is perfect for just relaxing, having a bit of fun, taking the pressure off and enjoying yourself. By the end, by using these looser colours and these simple lines, something cool will happen. <laughs> I can pretty much guarantee it. It doesn't always go to plan, but something cool always happens. So here's everything that we're going to need today. Um, a pen. I'm using my Twispy uh, Diamond 580 pen. It's got an extra fine nib in. And inside this I have carbon ink. This is a waterproof ink, which is really important, as I'm sure you know, for then popping some watercolours on top. All of these things, by the way, are linked on my website. There's a supplies link down below in the description. Um, alongside my ink, I've obviously got my paper. This is some Han Muller Anniversary Edition paper. It's rather nice. It's lightly textured cold press paper and it's 425 gram per square meter. This is my uh, watercolour palette. I did a video about these fairly recently. It's a relatively new palette. Just been using it the last couple of months or so. And then we've got three brushes. We've got a sort of size 10 to 12 round. This is actually a Chinese style brush. Um, it doesn't have an actual size, but it's about a size 10 to 12 round. A half inch flat and then a very small brush, a size two round brush. Um, loads of water, some tissue standing by on the side and we're good to go. Now, the reference is uh, linked in the description as well. And it's a little bit of an intimidating reference, but the, the aim today is just a relaxed sketch and find it easy. <laughs> Somehow we'll make this thing, which seems a bit tricky, actually end up feeling rather easy. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that by following a bit of a process. And that process starts with step one, finding our shapes. And I'm going to keep things quite small. This, this reference, one reason it feels a bit intimidating is because the building, uh, the church, fills up a lot of the reference. But instead of filling up the whole reference with the building, I'm going to sort of make it a little bit smaller and keep it really simple. So I'm finding here we've got a square, we've got a kind of uh, rectangle, which is the, the roof. And if we just get the angles of the rectangle approximately correct, what we'll find is that our perspective just works itself out. We don't need to think too carefully in a scene like that about a scene like this about perspective. Then come down, we just get the approximate correct sort of size of our rectangles proportionally. See this one comes down a little bit more. And I know it looks wibbly and wobbly and a bit nonsensical at the moment, but as we build up through the steps, this just all should hopefully come together. And if it doesn't, we'll still make something fun out of it and we'll still have learned something. Here we've got more sort of rectangles. It's actually a bit more of a square, isn't it? With a triangle and a little, I don't even know what to call that. It's a semicircle and a rectangle. It doesn't really matter if you don't know what to call your shapes. It's more about understanding that they are simple shapes, that they're not complex things. We don't have to draw this whole church. We just break it down little by little. Out here, we've got a little uh, guttering, which is quite fun to add in, I think. And then we'll replicate this kind of funny window shape here. Got a little wall sticking out there. Another window here, which is a little bit different. So I'll just try and get that idea in as well. Here we've got a, a grave. Uh, it's basically a big cube, isn't it? So I'll pop that in. And then off to the side here, we've got this dark side in perspective. I'm going to leave that unfinished and see if we come back to that. Now to just, the, the perspective has flattened out a little bit here. So we can just correct our lines a tiny bit. And then I can exaggerate the downward drift of this line to hopefully get more of that feeling of perspective. And that's just one of these things, you know, you go straight in with ink, it's oftentimes gonna not be as perfect as we'd want it, but it also teaches you to sort of accept that. And it, it's fine that it's not as perfect as we'd love it to be every time, but little by little, <laughs> hopefully we improve. And if not, you know, 
as long as you're having a bit of fun, then that's that's the important thing for most of us, at least. Now, what else can we do in this stage? So we're, we're thinking clearly about how just to get these shapes. And we might find, for example, that we want to redo a couple of the shapes here. This this door just wasn't as big as it could be. And having re redone that, I can now just start finding bits of darkness, adding a bit of um, extra kind of interest to these shapes by adding these textures and shadows. Um, and I'm still focusing very much on this church because aside from this church, the reference hasn't got, it feels like there's a lot going on, but it, it kind of also doesn't have a huge amount going on. If we can get this church feeling really good, nice and simple, but still really good, then I imagine we'll actually feel pretty good about the whole scene. So come down here, we get these little marks in as well. And there we go. So let's briefly move away. Before we, we come back, we can add some more textures to the church, but let's briefly move away so we don't get too stuck in one place. And here I'm going to find in the distance, we've got these kind of rolling hills, rolling hills, rolling trees, rolling sort of loopy shapes. And all I want those to be is show that it's something different. Then here we've got this big circle cutting in. Rather than just doing it as a big circle, I will try and get, it's a circle but with a huge amount of texture. So we're following this circle shape, but within that circle, <laughs> or within that, the sort of realms of that circle will be these kind of leaf-like shapes. And we can build on these later as well. They come all the way down to here. And there we go. And now we've got a little wall coming across there, which is a simple kind of rectangle. And in front of it, there's a few little gravestones we can use to break up the outline. Got another wall coming in across here and it kind of comes to there. And so what I'm going to do is work out where does this intersect? So it comes the corners at the below this window. So I can then send that line up like this. And then I just have to join these two lines up, bring down the vertical lines. And we've kind of, again, cheated our way to doing the perspective, not perfectly. I already explained, I got that one a bit wrong, but also not awfully, not badly at all. And this is why I said there's not much going on. As long as we get this church in, then we've sort of got our scene. I'm going to just spend a little bit of time now on some textures, though, because I think just getting these kind of textured areas of wall will inform us a kind of a little bit more about what's going on here. And the trick is going to be to try and keep those lines of perspective going along, but keeping the verticals very vertical, just as we build in our little brick textures. And as they get further away, they get much smaller. And that helps as well with the kind of sense of scale and position and the perspective. Here we can be big and bold. This is very much our foreground. We can also start to see that there's some sort of different shaped bricks. And you see, I took my eye off the ball. And I did a line which wasn't vertical. You can immediately feel how sort of wrong that just appears and doesn't work, does it? So I'm going to cover that up by adding a few more lines. So cheeky bit of pretending it was never there. And by the end, although you could still feel it there at the moment, by the end, that really will have faded into distant memory. But it does show you the importance of just making these lines come down nice and vertically. Otherwise, it's really quite noticeable that you sort of squiffed up the perspective a little bit. Going to just reinforce the top line of this wall. And let's see if we can get a little bit of that kind of sense of the curving stones in as well. So that's just going to be a few of these kind of curving lines and then just joining them up on the far side. And this bit again, I'm going to leave unfinished. I want this kind of sense of is it there, is it not kind of building in. Here we can add in the base of the wall, but again, I'm going to leave it unfinished. We can always finish it later if it feels a bit sort of needless later, but uh, to start with, let's just leave, let's, let's sort of have a bit of fun, leave something to the imagination. Back here, we have, haven't have quite finished the ground. So we've got this kind of, there's a stone running all the way along the base of the church, but in front of that, we've got a few gravestones, we've got little bits of grass, and just going to get these shapes in. Now I'm taking ideas from the scene and I'm just trying to make them work for me. So rather than trying to be too literal about what actually is going on in this graveyard in front of this church, I'm trying to sort of make it work within my little scene. So I take ideas and 
pop them in, get these little ideas of grass, little flourishes. Maybe there's a little path or something along here. And there we go. And we're almost there. We've got this thing sort of feeling relatively all right at the moment. I might add in a few more sort of structural marks, marks which suggest there's something here. Like again, these, these curves going off into the distance, but unfinished. And then it's time to just come in. I'm going to turn my pen upside down and get some of these kind of textures into the distance here. Nice bold marks to show some shadows. So we can be a bit braver now that our to the rest of our scenes coming to life around here. Same here, we can just get a little bit more of the structure and a little bit along here as well. And then how else can we find some little textures, little bits of the roof here and there everywhere, little dotting in. And then the same over here, just little dribs and crabs of texture, not overdoing it, just kind of suggesting these linear marks. I'm going to ignore the sort of, again, we're, we're simplifying, remember, so I'm going to ignore the complexity going on in this um, and just keep it nice and simple. And then come back and get some more of these bricks. And again, these bricks will help us show the perspective and direction. By having these bricks angling up, these angling down, it shows us there's different things going on in different places. Here, a little bit of just simple hatching to start with in these windows. Finish off this window, which I never finished, despite talking about it and how it looked a bit different. Never finished it at all. There's also funny, slightly different bricks here, and I might make a feature of that. So we'll just make this much more certain. Show again that this kind of sticky out bit really is a weird sticky out bit. And there we go. And I think that is more than enough. For this stage this is kind of been our shapes moving into getting those textures into our shapes and i often say shapes need textures i even have a little slide for it <laughs> which i often put up in my in my tutorials now i'm going to just apply really loose colors and this is the relaxing stage and all we need to do here all we need to do is let the colors flow and flow leave plenty of space and not overthink things, just accept our colours are probably better at painting than we are. At least that's the case for me. I, I shouldn't um, suggest it's the case for everyone else, but for me, my colours know what they're doing um, and they, they guide me through this process. And if I try and do too much with them and don't let them do their thing, it all goes horribly wrong. <laughs> so just let them flow and float and move. We can use these shapes as little guidelines to pop our water and then the colours will do what they want amongst that. We, I like using these little, I call them water bridges. And if you've been in my um, courses on sketchloose.co.uk, you will find there's lessons about uh, water bridges. And this is the idea of linking our colours together using the shadows and things like that, so that the colours don't just sort of sit in one place. We can even link them through the middle of a, a building like that. This is just promoting a bit of fluidity in our sketch. Um, here I've used a bit of ultramarine, a bit of lavender for those of you who are interested. I'm going to get a bit of green appetite, genuine, a nice earthy green colour here and just start touching that in. And I might also play with a little bit of um, azo yellow as well, something a bit brighter and that will mix in with those greens and blues and we'll get this kind of varied grassy wash coming down the page. And again, letting things just blend and merge and mix through the shadows. You can put little touches of yellow in places, little bits more of this green, just kind of the wrong colour there, a bit of green. Let these textures develop. And you can see by holding the paper, I can control how fast the colours flow and I can sort of suddenly stop them if I want to, or I can encourage them to move and blend if I want them to do that. And there we go, still leaving plenty of white space but feeling pretty good there. I'm going to take um, a bit of Mars yellow now. This is a bit like an ochre, really, a sort of ochre colour, yellow ochre, gold ochre, sorry. Um, and just wash that across the front here. You can see it gives a nice sort of soft warmth. And uh, let's use a bit of this red, which is already in my palette. Now this red isn't realistic to what's there, but it 
it will serve an artistic purpose. And that artistic purpose is largely to make me happy, but also I think it shows a nice warmth and it does reflect the contrast here versus here. This is definitely an outlier in terms of colour. And then if we come forward into this wall, there's some more convincing sort of red bricks here and there. Again, not loads, but we're taking hints from the scene and doing our thing with them. And that's more than okay. I think that's absolutely a wonderful way of painting. It's not how you have to paint. You can be very realistic if you want, but I think it's also a really wonderful way to paint just by allowing yourself to have a bit of creative freedom. Now, if I try and keep building up and building up here, all I'm going to achieve is muddy colours. The reason I say that is because everything's still wet, which is great, but that means when I'm adding my colours down, they're going to mix and splurge and move. And instead of creating more definition or more contrast, I'm just going to oversaturate everything, overload the page. And here I need to stop. <laughs> so we'll stop. This will take five to ten minutes to dry. And when it's come back and it's pretty much dry, not totally, but pretty much dry, we can have a look at our bold colours step through. And here we are, we're back and we are, yep, touch dry. There's a little bit of wetness and that's great because that will keep our colours kind of fluid and not overly rigid. And we're going to move on to bold colours. So I'm going to move to a smaller brush. This smaller brush, you can see literally it's got a smaller belly. Their fibres are shorter, but also it holds much less water. And that means our colours being laid down will be much more specific, much less sort of um, fluid, much darker, more saturated. And it's time now that we can start sort of picking out specific highlights. As an example, if we just go straight in on our church and I do a little pop down here, you can see that this is, even with a fairly watery colour, more intense. And we can start, for example, using this, just simple wash, to create some light shadows. So we can find all the areas which we want to be in shadow. And we can add a little bit of our red here and there, little bits of the Mars yellow in other places, and just generally pick these lovely sort of features which make things feel a bit more 3D. We can also just change things up a bit more and get some really intense colour, maybe a big mix of our yellow and red, and just gently pick out a couple of bricks. Don't want to do too much with this, we can always come back at a later stage and add a bit more, but that kind of just lets us start to build up the interest little by little. Sometimes it will go a bit too much, so I'm just going to feather the edge a little bit there, soften it out, and there we go. Um, on this side, why don't we just take a bit, a bit of this sort of bluey green mix here, mix it with that red, and we should end up with something a bit neutral. And now we can also just enhance the shadows back here, and maybe even a little bit of shadow at the base, and in some of these gravestones which we've got here. With that in mind, if that's working, and I think it's working quite well, I might even just double down on some of those shadows. So this is a bit of graphite grey now. And this can start coming in to the windows, these really dark places. Along here there's another little dark shadow. And we can touch it in into the previous shadows as well and make them a little more very little more interesting. There we go. So we've now got this kind of shadowy composition moving around. In the foreground I'll get some of our green and I'll just apply some little strokes. This is also going to imply a bit of shadow, it's going to imply little areas of grass and interest. And in the very distance, it can bring out just the fact that these trees are not green, they're not little swirls of sky, they are in fact trees. Underneath, I'm going to separate them from the ground with a little bit of red. That will float up and blur up and hopefully create something quite lovely. In front, in the very foreground, and maybe my last little touch for this, uh, this part, this sort of uh, section, if you like, be a few touches of strong brick shapes. So we've got these same reds and yellows, so Mars yellow, pyrrole scarlet, little touches here and there. And then in the very front, maybe, just little bits of green, suggesting that we've got some little grass and things poking up. So it's all kind of connecting and flowing say the last thing but I always find something else I want to do so I'm going to do a little bit more with these greys in here as well get some little grey bricks little bits of 
movement okay and there we go and just like that i am going to leave it that's a really simple step really enhanced some of the structure but not overdone it and we can always add more later next we need this to dry again and then we can come back and add our ink again a bit of restructuring with our pen and here we are pretty much dry and we're now going to come back and restructure when i say restructure what i mean is refine some of those key lines and shapes respond to what's happened on the page so this blue for example has crept across and we can just sort of push it back a little bit by putting a bold black line down don't want to overdo this or it becomes a bit cliche a bit too much but a nice sort of judicial sensible well thought out set of bold lines will really reinvigorate your sketch and just show the viewer exactly what you want to show them this is your chance to you know we, we let the colors do their thing now we're bringing them back into line and this is where we're really enhancing the contrast and this is where we cheat with our ink and watercolor we don't have to spend ages layering our watercolors because we can come in with bold ink which is immediately highly contrasting this is also where we might start to you know decide to do denser hatching we did very light hatching earlier but here we could again use our cheating ink and get some really dark areas we can even block in areas so this for example we could block in with some very very dense hatching it's not really hatching anymore at this stage it's just filling in <laughs> and there we go and it doesn't need to be too much it doesn't need to be overdone it doesn't need to be too neat we can put swirls in we can put loops in we can bring out some of these little textures we've made before and we can still leave plenty to the imagination I will find a few of our bricks again and I'll focus a bit on things which are in the foreground but other things will leave sort of ghosted out we can even add in a couple of extra little ghosted out marks and swirls and bits of texture to fill spaces we recognize as a bit empty now coming along here we want the foreground to really feel like it's in the foreground and all the lines will feel closer as will these bolder colors so we just reinvigorate as well these bolder lines and hopefully give us a sense of a real foreground a real wall right in front of our nose here we can find some of these little red shapes blue shapes little white areas these little plants we added in can become swirls and all the time trying not to overdo things because that's often the real challenge the one thing i feel is missing is a bit of something here and i think what's happened we've got this interesting tree this what we call the circle at the beginning kind of floating in at the edge but what it's not doing is providing a contrast and what would be lovely is if we just come around here and we kind of outline our color and suddenly we get this almost it's like a frame coming into the scene and that kind of pushes us back in we can finish off that frame connecting the wall here and now we've got this image kind of flowing and linking together i wonder if there's even room for a little bit more linking just coming down here to show the kind of perspective flowing through the graveyard and like that i think that's my ink done moving on to the final step final touches and i immediately think you know what maybe i will use my ink for a couple more touches in here just tiny little bits of extra texture little black tiles and things like that no longer am i restructuring so i'm gonna stick this in the final touches section put that away and then bring out for the final 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 touches my little brush and here's where we get to play with our boldest colors so i'm using a tiny brush which you don't need me to show them side by side it's obviously much smaller it's obviously gonna therefore give us much bolder more intense more specific lines and colors and that means i can come in with sort of these bold reds and deep graphite greys and start really kind of getting these lovely areas in pop in some nice deep gray here and we're kind of just really invigorating the whole image hopefully with these little highlights if we're feeling brave we might suddenly decide you know what 
a bit more shadow in some places would be good. And we can do it really boldly, and as I said, bravely, by using this small list of brushes. And then I think if we get some nice yellow in our green, we can lift a couple of these little swirly grass shapes. And last but not least, some nice splashes just to fill some of that dead space. A little bit of red to splash and kind of give us that warmth and that sort of feeling of fullness across the image. And there we go. The final step, of course, the most important step, the secret step, which only comes if you watch the whole video. Pop your initials on. I like to sign my art somewhere in the middle and just be proud of what you've done. If you enjoyed this, check out one of these videos, which I'm sure you'll love. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Let me know what you think of these processes. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.